All right, um, so now we're going to have a look at some more mathematical tools that can help us to analyze turbulent flows. So one of them uh, that what we are going to introduce now is uh, the, the concept of probability. And the probability is something that uh, helps us to uh, understand a bit more about the turbulent flow, more above that what uh, we can get from, for example, the mean value or the, the, the RMS value. So the probability can tell you what is the probability of the, the flows in a certain stage. Uh, um, state in. So for for example, a flow can be um, have two pre predominant uh, states and uh, with that uh, you would be able to identify that if you're now looking using these tools that we are going to introduce now. But to more of that uh, a little bit later. So we are going to have the probability and this was going to lead us to the uh, commutative distribution uh, uh, function and the probability uh, density function. And um, how to we get to there, uh, we, I will explain you now. Okay, first we need to define our sample space. So a sample space is um, um, uh, the probability that, a, for example, the velocity uh, attains a um, um, certain value. So, for example, probability That the velocity is below 10 meters per second. Okay, and so I'm calling this event, so it's a velocity, it's below 10 meters per second. I call this event A. And I say that A is now defined as U slower than 10 meters per second. Oops. So and this is now our sample space. <clears throat> so if I want to now generalize that a bit more. I say my event B I define that as u below vb, where v is my an independent velocity. And that is now a variable. Or you can also say a threshold. <clears throat> so you could say that, for example, the uh, threshold is 10 meters per second or 20 meters per second, 30 meters per second. So I can now change the, the V. Or if I want to even generalize it even more, I can say now C is now VA smaller than U, smaller than VB. So I'm not only limiting it between 0 meters per second and 10 meters per second, but uh, between two uh, completely independent uh, variables. But uh, of course you need to uh, here, because VA uh, must be smaller than VB. That is somewhat implicitly. Okay, so now I have my sample space. Now what is the probability? So, for example, the probability of an event B I call now P, or as P, and that's now, uh, that is event, uh, equal to P of B, so probability is the probability of the event of the uh, generalized of an event happening in this uh, space for, for B. That is exactly the probability of U smaller than VB. So the probability can take values between 0 and uh, 1, where 0 is going to be then an impossible event and 1 is going to be then a certain event. equals zero, impossible, 
events. And p equal one uh, certain event. Of course, the probability can take any value in between. Okay, then I can define my cumulative cumulative distribution function. I'll call that CDF. <clears throat> so uppercase F, my CDF of an event B, oh, so the, 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 the event space V is going to be the probability of, sorry, U smaller than V. Okay, now you see that V is a variable. Now I can uh, change, uh, can I plot this function as a function of v. <clears throat> so for example, uh, f of db would be the probability of u smaller db uh, equal db. Okay, uh, v can take values between minus infinity and plus infinity, so depending on uh, your, the velocities that it can take on, I can uh, define it as, uh, there, there's no limit for that, so v minus infinity is uh, plus infinity. So now let's plot that, then I can explain you a bit more about how to read this one. So, for example, I have here my f, and here my sample space v. For example, this one is 10 meters per second. This one is 20 meters per second, 30 meters per second, and so on. I have here 1. So, probability, the maximum probability that I can get is 1. So, no value can be above that. The lowest can be zero, so it can, must be somewhere over there. So the CDF, as an example, could now look like this. <clears throat> so at 10 meters per second, this one is just a probability that uh, each value is uh, that you obtain is below 10 meters per second. In this case, it's maybe 0 0.4 that all of the values are below 20 meters per second, you get over here, just as an example, maybe 0 0.6, and so on, and 30 meters per second is already where, that all of your values are below 30 meters per second is already uh, uh, quite probable, and here, if you look at 40 or 50 meters per second, is almost a certain event. It means all of the, 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 the velocities that you can find in your flow, if that is your CDF, this essentially tells you that all of the values that you're going to find are below 40 meters per second here. And uh, you also see that if this one is here, for, for example, minus 10 meters per second, minus 20 meters per second, that's impossible to have any values that are uh, below 20 meters, minus 20 meters per second. So in between, it gives you the probabilities of all of these. Okay, so for the cumulative distribution function, when you have that, uh, there are some rules to that. So the first one is f of minus infinity is going to be zero. So you see it's always going to be zero. Uh, must be going somewhere to zero at, at the end. And uh, the f of plus infinity is going to be one. So it's always going to be, uh, you're always going to be able to, to define a sample space that is absolutely certain. Okay, the, you also see that 
f of vb smaller than f, oh sorry, larger or equal f of uh, va. If va is uh, sorry, smaller than vb. So saying that, for example, va is 10 meters per second, vb is uh, 20 meters per second. You see these values are always going to be larger than this one because if you had have in sample space VB, it also includes the entire probability of VA. So if you have a probability of uh, that your value is going to be 20 meters or below, that means all values that are 10 meters and below are going to be included in this probability. So that's why the, the probability if you're increasing the sample space from 10 meters to 20 meters per second, it's always going to be larger or equal, maybe. So if you're increasing it from 50 to 60 meters per second, there's not much happening anymore. So, but it, so it needs to be because uh, the, the smaller sample space is always included in the larger one. So the probability needs to be always uh, larger if you're increasing the, 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 the sample space. Okay. You can also say then that uh, f of vb minus f of va is equal to the probability of va sorry, smaller equal u smaller equal vb. <clears throat> and both of them now needs to be, or this probability needs to be larger or equal to zero. So this was essentially the, the sample space over here. So now looking between these two, this is essentially calculating now. In this case, uh, for an example, VA is 10 meters per second, the probability is 0 0.4. The, so the, the VB is 20 meters per second, so the probability is 0 0.6. So the probability that the, um, the, your values are between VA and VB between 10 meters and 20 meters per second are the difference between these two. So that's 0 0.6 minus 0 0.2. So in this example, uh, this probability would be 0 0.2. So then it's la always larger and equal than zero, it follows that f is, all, is not decreasing. But always increasing. Or remaining the same. So you see this function here is always increasing, always increasing, or maybe staying the same. It's never going down again. That is because uh, essentially the, the larger sample space is always included, including the, 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 the smaller sample space. All right, so with that, we have now introduced a cumulative distribution function. That is an important uh, function, but uh, something a little bit more interesting is the probability density function, and you're going to derive that from that, from this CD. So the PDF, the probability density function. We define that as lowercase f as dfv dv. So f is the CDF, and uh, we're just integrating or deriving it in v. So it's a gradient of the CDF. Okay, we know that the CDF is not decreasing, it's always increasing. That means the derivative needs to be always positive or zero. So since f is not decreasing, not decreasing, f always positive. Or zero, of course. <clears throat> Thank you.
You can also show that, uh, sorry, that if you're integrating the PDF from minus infinity to plus infinity, f of v, dv, is going to be 1. So the area underneath this function is always going to be 1. <coughs> so if you're going back to this graph, you're also going to see that the gradient at minus infinity is going to be 0, and the gradient at plus infinity is going to be 0. So f of minus infinity is 0, and f of plus infinity is 0. OK, as an example now, let me first plot the CDF. This is v. This is f. Here's one. So we had a, for example, a curve that looks like this. Okay. The PDF is then the gradient of x. So the gradient in this case is highest over here. 0 over here, 0 over here, then you get this nice bell curve. Over there. With that, you have now created your first uh, PDF. <clears throat> so the PDF is actually something that is quite interesting to, to use. So in this case, it can tell you now, for, for example, how probable is to have the, the, for example, in this case, the velocity of 0 is the most uh, probable one. Then if you have a velocity of, let's say, 20 meters per second, it's a little like uh, you have uh, a probability of this, and so on and so on. So it gives you a probability for each of these uh, velocities, or each of these events, how probable that uh, that can be. That gives you um, quite a bit more information compared to the mean value and the fluctuating part. It gives you now the information how probable it is that in any event within your turbulent flow can, can occur. So the PDF is something that you can read more easily. The CDF, well, if you like it, you can also use it. But uh, you're going to use the CDF in particular to, to derive the PDF. 